In the forums, I've seen some people comment on the Excess and its ring modulator saying how they wished oscillator A produced a sine wave so that they could ring modulate the sine wave from oscillator B with that of oscillator A. Because by default, uh, the signals that feed the ring modulator are oscillator A and oscillator B. One trick you can do if you would like to ring modulate two sine waves is let's go ahead and select our sine wave and oscillator B and instead of using oscillator A, this waveform, we're going to use the filter uh, self-resonating to produce our secondary sine wave and if we want that sine wave to follow the pitches that we're playing we can turn up the key follow and that will um, bring notes in from either MIDI if we've got the AB selected or if we plug it into the CV input uh, we can get our key follow that way. Um, we've got waveform C. Let, let's start here. Alright, so since the filter is generating our second sine wave, we're going to route the filter out into the audio in and in waveform A we're going to select external which is then going to be that output of the filter. In the mixer section we're going to select uh, turn up waveform C and for waveform C we're going to select the ring modulator. So basically we've got the sine wave coming from the filter feeding one part of the ring modulator, oscillator B feeding the other part of the ring modulator. The ring modulator then gets connected from waveform C out into our amplifier in which is going to send it into our VCA and in our VCA we've just got a simple attack decay type envelope and we've set it up for the fastest attack time and a fairly short decay time just so we can get a percussive type metallic sound. So let's go ahead and start an arpeggiation. So at this point oscillator B is tracking the notes that we played in that arpeggiation. The filter is not, so we can change the frequency of this filter. And we can change the frequency of oscillator B as well. And notice we're not modulating not modulating the filter frequency at all at this point. So now, what if we want the filter frequency to change a little bit? Let's go ahead and increase the key follow amount. And go ahead and adjust our... We can also cross-modulate these two frequencies by selecting waveform B to modulate the filter cutoff frequency. Or we can select waveform A, which is getting its signal from the external, which is the filter output, and to modulate oscillator B. And let's introduce some cross-modulation between those two. And then you hear just start to break into a little bit of chaos as those frequencies intermodulate with each other. And there it becomes so intermodulated that it almost turns into a noise source. Let's back these modulations off. Now we could introduce some sweeping of the frequency as well. Create a little percussive attack on there. Now you can see our accent sensitivity is kicking in and so it's jumping between these two different times. If we go ahead and select the accent normal decay times Or 
Well, let's go ahead and select this one. In addition, we could furthermore shape this sine wave that's coming from the filter frequency. Let's turn our modulation down and add a little bit of overdrive to it. Let's go ahead and get rid of this envelope. And sometimes you'll find that when you're ring modulating stuff, it's not really useful to have both frequencies tracking one another. So to set your key follow to some weird interval, you'll get more uh, complex um, harmonics per each note that it plays. Because it's not the same for every note, the relationship of this frequency to that one. So there you go, play with that, have fun!